Hi and welcome to Rudy's the Sue's Science Fantasy Experience and to an unboxing video. Well, a mystery unboxing video. So this box came yesterday to work and I haven't ordered it anything. Uh, I've already received kind of what I was expecting so I just I have no clue what's coming, you know, like this is what I was waiting on, Darkwing Duck, you know, a, I literally got it yesterday and I've been playing around with it this morning, watching Sunday morning cartoons, reliving a bit of nostalgia with a few episodes of Darkwing Duck and Tailspin. So that was the only thing I was like expecting to be delivered. And this came to work. And it's got no sender on it and the address label was printed off on the computer, so I thought, oh, I'm not even going to guess like who this can be. There's no handwriting that I can even make an attempt to guess at. So I just thought, I'm going to open this up on camera, hope for the best, and see what's see what's inside. As like I just I have no idea what could be in it. I'm presuming it's going to be a toy, or it could be some sort of serial memorabilia. Um, so yeah, let's do an unboxing. Quite the sharpest blade known to man. The, I can see a note. There's a note in there. That's that's a good sign. Just this. This is crazy. I have, I just I have no idea. God, I love the unexpected. I know this handwriting, this is my dad. Uh, Hi Rudy, I saw this and knew you'd want it. Lots of love, Dad. My dad's a man of <laughs> very few words anyway. Right, so my dad has sent me something. I can only imagine he's like seen something in a charity shop or a car boot sale and kind of thought, I would, I would want this. So, let's have a look. Turn to bubble wrap. Oh my god! There's an AWE striker in here, and crankcase. This is nuts. Oh my god! I can't believe it. He's found an AWE striker somewhere. My dad's not the type of guy to go into like a vintage toy shop, or. Would he really find this at a car boot sale? Yeah, oh my god, it, it's got like all the bits. So here we have an AWE striker. This is my original. This is my original AWE striker. Are you kidding me? This is nuts. No way. I'm like probably like shaking. I know this is my AWE striker because there is a broken bit off the suspension. This is my original 1985 AWE striker. Oh my god! This is insane! I, I can't believe it. What? This is nuts. Like. I really thought I'd donated this. So. Back in, I'd say like 94 maybe, um, when I was 15, 16, I decided to donate a big majority of my old toys to a hospice um, where I lived. Um, it was like a couple of villages down in Compton and it was a hospice for people with terminal illnesses and they had like a children's ward um, so I wanted to donate all you know the good majority of the toys that I had to children that were dying because um, I wanted them to have all the experiences 
and the pleasure that I had with all my toys. And I was getting at that age, 15, 16, when, you know, I wasn't, you know, playing with toys or or really wanting them in the house. I needed to make space and, you know, I was into other things by then and it was just a way to free up some space in the house and I just, I wanted to donate them. And I just thought I'd really donated my AWE striker. But I obviously haven't. This is crazy. In some ways, you know, I kept like Optimus Prime and I kept Micro Machines and a few other bits and pieces, a few bits and pieces of, of Lego. Um, and I, I was gonna say regret. I don't regret donating that stuff at all, far from it. But I think there might have been a few things now that I, in some ways I wish I'd kept because I am now a toy collector and I'd love to have them again because they actually hold strong, meaningful memories for me. And the AWE Striker is, is one of them. And the memory that comes with it was in 1985, I was really, really ill on a Saturday and both my parents had to go to work. Um, so I was literally bundled up in all these blankets and taken round to my grandparents' house to for Nana, the affectionate name for my grandma, um, and she would look after me whilst my mum and dad were at work. And I was like super delirious, like all flued up. And I don't remember much of the day. I just kind of remember being on the sofa in her lounge watching like TV, you know, probably watching like Starfleet and the A-Team and, you know, all those things that like Saturday grandstand. And it got to like half five, six o'clock. Um, and my parents had come to, to pick me up. And we got home. And just before I was about to kind of get into bed my dad was like here we go we got you this and I get it out of the Woolworths bag I believe and here was the Action Force AWE Striker and I was like blown away I'd, I'd not seen Action Force before and I just didn't know what it was I was so into Transformers and GoBots in that that year that I'd not even seen Action Force on G.I. Joe and I just thought it was like the most amazing toy to have. The box is really, really big and the artwork was really, really cool. It was a Jeep and I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm in a world of half ill, half excited, kind of a little bit all over the place. And I open it up and realize that you have to build it yourself. And I break down into an absolute flood of tears because I want to play with this toy and it's not it's not built, it's not ready, even though it's like six o'clock and it's time for bed and I'm not very well. I'm just an emotional wreck and I, just, I can't play with the toy that I want. Uh, and then I go to bed. Just really disappointed, angry, frustrated crying ill um, but obviously I wake up the next morning super excited you know because I'm I've got the toy to look at in the box again because I always like to look at the box when I um, got a toy as a kid for like hours on end but what my dad had done was he'd spent the evening completely building it up and stickering everything all on um, and I fondly remember that my dad had over-stickered um, a bit of the Action Force logo over the side, so it wasn't central. This is how I know it's my AWE striker. And I rush downstairs, and there it is on the dining room table uh, with the box stood up and this in front of it, all built and ready to be played with. I 
it's such a powerful, strong memory. And I can't believe it's back in the collection. I often say that I'm not interested in reacquiring toys I had as a kid, like rebuying them again. I, I purposely probably wouldn't choose to rebuy an, an AWE Striker. But now that I have my original, it is absolutely, it's mind blowing. And the fact that, if I can grab in, crankcase is here. This, the driver that comes with him, or if you're an avid figure force watcher, you will know he's the unofficial fifth member as hog watcher. I can't believe I own a hog watcher now. This, it's so, so good. I, I just, I'm, I'm in shock and awe. Let's hit the rug for some floor time. This has now become a childhood toys episode. So here is my 1985 original AWE Striker with crankcase, or should I say, the hog watcher. So I have spoken to my dad and he told me that he found a box inside another box with his name on it and inside was this, along with like a tease made and just random bits that he just didn't realise were there in storage. So. This has just literally been boxed up for like 25 years. And it shows because it's in like immaculate condition. I know I didn't play with it that much as a kid because I didn't have that many um, GI Joes and Action Force. And I didn't mix my toys. I only ever played, you know, one toy line at a time. But I definitely remember playing in the garden uh, with this rolling it along the grass. So this is Crankcase and obviously his helmet pops off to show his beautiful ginger mane. And again, a moustache. It seems to be a popular thing in my collection now that I have action figures with moustaches. Sadly, I don't have his gun. I'm pretty sure that got lost way back in the 80s there's no way that's going to be around so yeah that's that's crankcase and he's just beautifully detailed and the paintwork is is so good the detail on the straps and the extra little flashes of of red but this is the one that it's all about the awe striker and my dad did an incredible job in putting on the stickers. They are perfectly aligned, apart from the one that I didn't like as a kid that he went too far over. And that's my, that seems to be a bit of a nuance for me in toy collecting. I always want my stickers to be as good as possible. And when I'm stickering up my own toys, I just, I like to spend a bit of time. And I know that that's what my, did on, my dad did on that that night where I was a ball of tears. As you can see, there's steering action. The cannon rotates and goes up and down. And I guess because it's been in storage for so long, the rubber has not deteriorated one bit. I always did play with my toys very carefully. Oh, that's something I didn't know. I didn't know that had suspension. I guess you don't notice these things as a kid and then you do when you're much older or an adult collector. Again, the detail on the back on the engine block, all these extra little molded details put into Action Force and Joe vehicles are just absolutely stunning. And then all those stickers perfectly placed on. And as you can see, there's all detail inside with the gear stick. Excuse the dust, I haven't had a chance to clean it. I was so excited to get this out and have a, a look at it. And then obviously you can see there's extra little pegs either side to add extra Joes and have them wherever you see, see fit. And because Joes are so poseable, they can just fit on wherever you deem appropriate having sitting in 
inside the driver's seat. If I can get him in. <laughs> Here's where I break the O-ring. Not today. Yeah, so there we have crankcase, the hog watcher driving the AWE striker. It's an incredible toy, and it's an incredible toy to have back in the collection. A toy that I thought was long, long gone. Thanks for watching and joining me on this incredible mystery unboxing and getting to relive a little bit of my childhood through this toy. Thanks. Bye.